Welcome to WSN's podcast, The Three Wise Men. I'm Danny Holbrook, alongside Miles Holiday and Mark Shine. Gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? They're great, man. We got two outstanding guests, don't we? Yeah, go ahead and introduce our guests. Oh, Troy Parker and Brady Parker from Lima Central Catholic and winners of four in a row. Things are good over at uh, T-Bird Country, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so polite. Mark, how are you today? Well, yeah, I'm really good, Danny, and I've got some questions. I just can't wait to get this interview going because i got some things I want to find out from these two guys. Absolutely. You know, last week we had Jim Epperly on. Yep. He's an official. We just grilled him with all kinds of questions. Tonight, it's all about the father and son duo. But Troy, you and I have known each other for a long time. We competed against each other in high school. Yes. I'm sure you won more than you lost against me. <laughs> uh, and and you've, you've raised some great kids and some great athletes, and we are so excited to talk to you about that journey not just with him, but with your other children and, and just the, the aspect of a family. And, uh, you know, we, I just love that kind of stuff. When Miles and I talked about bringing you guys on, I was super excited and you yeah. guys all in. So thanks for coming tonight. Really Thank you for it. having us. It, it means a great deal and it means a great deal to my son. Uh, you know, just being the youngest of five is never easy. And um, just having him highlighted this year is a big yeah, deal. Yeah, well, I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to go right after you, Brady. <laughs> Look, what a, what a year you're having right now. Congratulations. I know the year's got a long way to go. And you guys got a huge game this weekend. I realize that. What's it like to be the quarterback at LCC? I mean, that, that, is, that is something else, man. I mean, you know, besides everybody liking you, you know, what's it like to be the quarterback at Lima Central Catholic? I mean, it's fun. You know, my brother played it last year, and it's just fun to play right behind him. He taught me everything, so – and. You get all the fame from it, too, so it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, though. It's a quarterback-friendly system on offense, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What, what are some things that you like as a quarterback about the offensive system? Uh, Coach Palti does a great job with the offense. Staff is fantastic there. What are some things as a quarterback that you really enjoy playing in that, uh, that offensive system? Uh, I just like to throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have great receivers and great running backs like Matthew, so I, I can really trust my – Trust my uh, teammates, and it's just fun throwing them the ball, handing the ball off to Matthew, watch him go for 20 yards, a carry or something. It's just fun. All right, favorite route as a quarterback. What do you like to throw? Ooh, go ball. Has yeah, to the be. go ball. <laughs> yeah, has to be. Love it. That's what I want out of a quarterback. Absolutely. Brady, LCC has been not in the conference for the last several years. You get a chance now through your career to compete in a league. What, what does that mean to you? To finally be in a conference, especially first year for me, I think it's fun. You know, I have buddies throughout all the NWC. Like, my, I played my best friend week one. I mean, yeah, week one in the NWC against Allen East. That was his first game starting, too, Keegan Jones. He played good, but this being in the NWC is going to be really fun this year. You can't, you can't make the schedule the way you want it anymore, though. Uh, you know, you used to be able to pick, well, we want to play these guys. We want to play these guys. But now the schedule is determined for you. went to a Fort Army last week. You got bluffed in this week. It's a, it's a grind now because every game means something to you. Yeah, yes. I mean, every game, you know, every game, we won't take anything easy. We won't take any game easy at all. It'll just be a every, every week, week by week, every game is going to be our biggest game of the year. That's how we're going to treat every game this year. Troy, look, I, uh, I coached a lot of sports over the years. Uh, now, now I'm in the twilight of my career. They've moved me into radio and TV, so I don't <laughs> have to argue and fight with people. But... There, there was nothing, nothing I enjoyed more than watching my kids play sports, whether they were successful or not successful. I got so much joy out of that. Talk about that journey, because I know you have a son in college, you have a daughter in college, and now you've got another one coming up through the ranks. It's special, isn't it? It's, it's beyond special. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing. Um, you know, I have my two older sons uh, who played for Wapakoneta High School, and they had great success down there. I feel like I've been doing this forever, and here's my last one. I don't want it to end. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, every week is, is an adventure. Every week is just filled with pride and joy, just being able to watch them do what they love. Um, you know, we, we started this journey years ago, and the biggest thing that, that I teach the children, my wife teaches the children, it's God first, then it's family, then it's academics, and then the athletics are the fourth thing. If you don't have all those other three things aligned in front of you, it doesn't work. And they've adhered to it, they've committed to it, and they've been dedicated not only to their faith, but their, their family and their academics, as well as their craft. So it's just, it's been an amazing journey, and 
um, now that I'm on coaching staff, it's it's even kind of neater, cooler, if you will, yeah. um, because I get to watch him do what he loves and what he's proven to be pretty good at. Uh, Troy, you said five children that you've had? Yes. Um, now, I, I would love to know this because I, I don't have any kids. I still have a chance. When you are finding someone that you're going to raise children with that are going to be great athletes, did you have her <laughs> run the 40? <laughs> did you have her throw? What, what did you have her do? And so you knew, like, yep, she's the one. <laughs> well, quite candidly, my wife was a uh, pretty stellar basketball player for the Lima Senior Spartans. Oh, nice. Um, she was on their 1989 state tournament team. Um, so I, I, I kind of knew that athletics were going to be a, a big part of our, our life. Um, and she comes from a family of athletes as well. You know, our, our nephew Jagger Hutchins plays for Shawnee. Yes, That's her yes. brother's mm-hmm. son. Uh, and her other brother I played. I know that. That's yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> and, you know, with, with uh, um, Joe's daughters, you know, Carly and Josie, you know, they're pretty stellar uh, volleyball players. So, you know, there, there's a lot of pedigree in the family. Um, and basketball, baseball, football, it's all been a part of our life since these children have been young and, and they've, they've, they've adhered to it and that's, it's kind of what they've known. And to answer your question, yeah, mom had a great, <laughs> great big deal in that. Absolutely. Can do a little scouting on Absolutely. that one. Well, now you stepped into the role into coaching. Um, toughest thing about being a father coach, uh, what is the toughest part about that? Being able to have that relationship um, and, and having the, the child to decipher when it's time to call me dad and when it's time to call me coach. Yeah. And when we go home, I'm always dad, and, and he knows that. Now, there are times he wants to sit and watch film. He wants to talk about the game. I'll let him bring that up um, because y- you, have to, you have to have that dividing line, that line in the sand where when you leave practice, he doesn't need the additional pressure at home. And um, he, he's done a great job handling that, but also knowing that he can come to myself and say, hey, can, can we look at play 36 or what mm-hmm. have you? Can we look at this game film and, and just look things over? Troy, I wanted to hit something. I guess it's kind of a negative. I wonder how you deal with it, rightly or wrongly, in a football game. When something goes wrong, two people get yelled at by the people in the crowd, the head coach and the quarterback. Yes. What's it like for a dad – to hear your son, whether it's this one or the other ones he played, be criticized by people up in the crowd. And how do you handle that, first of all, yourself, and second at home? You know, I, I handle it very quietly, um, simply because, you know, the folks in the stands, you know, as, as great of fans as they can be, they don't understand what goes into it at practice. They don't understand what the kids go through to get themselves to that point. And there was only one perfect person to walk this earth, and they crucified him. So I don't expect perfection. They know they're going to make mistakes, and what folks need to realize is that they're children. They're going to make mistakes, Mm. and that's how they're going to get better in life. I tune it out. I tell the kids, I've always told the kids, whatever comes from the stands, it's just noise. It's just noise. Just get to what you're good at and continue to improve week by week, play by play. When I first started coaching, a guy told me that guy up in the 12th row yelling at you, he'll go out in the parking lot not know where his car is. So don't pay attention. (laughs) Don't pay attention to him. So it's just noise. It's just noise. I didn't know Danny went to your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty wild. I ride a bike. Yeah, (laughs) Brady, for you, what's it like having dad there with you coaching? I mean, look, I coached my daughter and my son in a lot of athletic events, uh, and I'm sure there were times that I was probably harder on than I probably should have been. Uh, Now we had our moments where you know we would talk about the games, but I was always. I, like your dad took that approach. I never pushed my kids into athletics. I let them make that decision. Now, once they committed to something, we're, we're going to go full bore. You know, what's that relationship like? Not, not father-son, you and the coach. It's fun. Like, he, he coaches defense. So like, it's not really like him coaching me a ton. But when I back, – back when I was little, he'd coach me in midget football. He'd always scream at me. <laughs> scream at, he'd scream at everybody. <laughs> But in that, a good way, though, and, right? And it, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. I love it. You can tell them we did win six oh, championships. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was a reason there. I, I guess it was worth it. But now he's a defensive coach. I'm on, off, on, on, I'm on the offensive side. So he, he can still teach me, but he can't coach me all of that because he still so coaches linebackers. Basically, every time you do something good, you're, you're beating him, yeah, right? Basically. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then the uh, coach sends another blitz, right? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, week one had to have been just one of those butterfly days where you're like, oh, I'm starting at quarterback uh, for the first time. Uh, how have you improved from week one to now? Is the game slowed down for you? Are you understanding things a little bit better? How is it, or the horizon br- brightened for you? Uh, I definitely think I've calmed down a little bit. Like it was definitely butterflies in my stomach all day that at, during school. Um, yeah, defense have slowed down. My reads have gotten much better through week by week, and I think I've run, ran a lot hard, ran the ball a lot harder week by week too. Okay, walk me through. You come up to the line of scrimmage. What's your checks? You go from left to right. You look at the line, make sure everybody's set. What, what do you walk through before you snap the ball? Um, well, first, if it's a pass play, I look at their DBs, and it really just depends on the play, like the routes we're running. Mm-hmm. And then our coach, Coach Stolle, he's taught me each read and which one to go to. And it's really just pre-snap reads. So I know what receiver I'm throwing it to before I, the ball is snapped. So you look at the coverage of it's two yeah, or three the or DB, they're playing yeah, man yeah. and you know where you're going to go to right away. Is there anything that defenses have done to you where you're like, boy, I just didn't understand what they were doing on that one and they got me that time? Um, I'd say really the only one was week one because I feel like the hardest coverage to throw against for a quarterback is cover two. Mm-hmm. Especially as a young guy, I, I, I do not like throwing against cover two. <laughs> Mel, Mel Kuyper says cover two should be outlawed in the NFL. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, Mel, Mel Kuyper, yeah. He yeah. says those safeties need to get way back up there. His hair yeah. should be outlawed from the NFL. <laughs> Brady, who's – I know you and your brother, Carson, are close and you've got friends on the team. Who's your go-to call when you're really – other than dad, obviously, you know, you go to mom and dad when there's issues, but do you have that guy that you call or that friend that you call and say, hey, I'm struggling with this or this or that? I would really just say my brother. Even that though makes he's in me college, happy. That makes me happy. You know, he, he went through it all three years, well, two and a half. But, yeah, when I'm struggling and when I'm going over film, I'll text or call him and he'll give me an immediate answer. Did, did you watch that recruiting process with him and know, look, I, I'm not going to blow you up, but I, I watched you play. Get ready for that stuff, kid. Because if you keep working like you're working and I see the progression like I know I'm seeing, you're going to go through that. So did you learn a lot from watching him? Yeah, I did. You know, he would be on different phone calls, I'd say, every week. And I just think it would be cool because I'd just be sitting right there. He'd be, the phone would be on speaker and it'd be cool to listen to and what they'd have to say. Brady Dad talked about faith, family, academics, and athletics. What's your week like from the game ends on Friday night and you get home at 10 p.m.? What's your week like until you get to Friday at 7 p.m. the next week? Right when I get home, I'm, our film was posted that night, so right when I get home, I'm, already, I'm with my family and my friends there, and then we eat, I go to bed, I'm looking for that film just to go over, and then I'm look, the next day we wake up early for film and lift. But that day, all that day, I'm looking for our film and the team that we play next week to already go over their film. But then you're talking about you know, you're going to school, you, you got athletics, you got family, you got church, you got all that. How do you do all the time management thing at your age? I mean, we've, I've really just been doing it my whole life, so it's like it's come natural to mm. me. So ever since I was in kindergarten, we go to church, and you know, school has always been, I'd say, come easy to me. So it's just been natural my whole life. Mm. What do you do when you just want to get away from football and that other stuff? Do you have anything that you, you say, I'm going to blow off some steam and I'm going to go in the backyard and I'm going to shoot baskets, I'm going to paint, I'm going to – what do you do? Um, I'd say we I'd go in the backyard, shoot baskets, or, I mean, we have a football net, I just throw footballs in there too, so – that's awesome, man. What kind of throwing program you have? You just want to throw it through there as many times as you can? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, I wish I was in high school again, man. <laughs> Joy, you know, you're around the kids, you're around the programs. What's, what's wrong with high school sports right now, and what's good about high school sports? I don't it's, mean to be negative. No, but, no. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I don't know if it's completely wrong about high school sports. I think, I think there's a lot of pressure put on these kids to be one dimensional um, rather than allowing these kids to have fun and enjoy the experience. Um, You know, I see a lot of one sport athletes that could be playing multiple sports, should be playing multiple sports, but they get it caught in their head that, oh, I have to focus on this one sport. And they miss out on opportunities to be a part Mm -hmm. of a team, to be a part of a family. I think there's a lot of pressure that comes from home. Uh, to some of these kids. And, and, and again, 
all five of the kids, you know, Kennedy was, Kennedy was a prime example. She went off to play Division II college softball. Um, she was at Malone, right? She was at Malone. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. she didn't have the greatest of experience. And, you know, I think she felt like we were going to pressure her to stay. But to us, it was about, are you happy? Are you comfortable? And she came back, and she's had the most wonderful three years at Bluffton University in her senior year playing volleyball, having the time of her life, living her best life. Part of the biggest problem is, is parents and pressure. And I, I, see, I, I see so much of that. Um, the great thing about high school athletics, some of the great things, is the diversity of being able to play multiple sports, being a part of a, a group and a family and creating brotherhoods. Um, one thing that I've really noticed here and in, in recently is because of social media, my son has friends from Spencerville, right. yeah. Delphus, Allen East, yep. all these different schools, and they've all become pretty tight to where back in the day, we didn't want to talk to anybody from Upper Sayota Valley. <laughs> we didn't want to talk to Mount East. No, <laughs> no. Especially with the last name Holbrook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was dealing all the women over there. Right, <laughs> yeah. We were already upset. Well, Julie, Julie's got to be excited about that. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, I, you know, the camaraderie of, of high school athletics and, you know, we not only do the schools do it, but we do it as a family. We we have a precedent that you have to hit a particular GPA or be in a particular spot grade wise to be able to to play extracurricular. You know, we've always taught them. Look, sports are one thing; they are called extracurricular activities. That means in addition to your curriculum, because curriculum is going to take you further in life than athletics are. Even though, you know, some, some kids will say, I'm going to the NBA or, you know. As a parent, has that gotten easier with each child because the precedent's been set? They've seen, like, uh, mom and dad are really going to hold us to it. I, I truly think it has because he's listened to all the barking and the harping. And, you know, um, the worst thing that probably happened for students was that progress book was invented. Uh, and so yeah. um, mm -hmm. his mother is, she is pretty, she's pretty uh, hardcore on it. And she's always checking on assignments, making sure that homework's done, making, you know, what happened with this quiz, that type of thing. But with him, he's he's heard it and he's seen it but he's also he also sees the importance in the end game um you know when when you send a child off to college part of their scholarship package they receive is academic oh absolutely yeah. and the higher the gpa the more academic monies you get and he's looking at it as i want to be successful and i'm going to be well-rounded now brady how long did it take you to figure out which parent to ask which questions of uh, pretty. It was pretty easy. Pretty quick. <laughs> I'll qualify that. His mother used to be a teacher. Uh, I'm in sales. <laughs> Brady, when you turn when you turn a game on on Sunday afternoon or Sunday night or Monday night or Thursday night, whatever it is, is there a quarterback that you watch that you say I'd like to be able to do that, or I'd like to build my game like that guy? And why? There's not really one quarterback that like I would want to be, like I look up to. I really just like, cause my fundamentals aren't like, my fundamentals aren't uh, at where I still where I, they're not where I want them to be. So I look at the good quarterbacks and I see where their fund fundamentals are at, how they throw the ball and try to, I try to do what they do. Hmm. Um, with uh, success, getting better at quarterback, you get a little more trust with your offensive staff, right? Are you to the point yet where you can draw something up on uh, paper and take it to the staff and say, I think this might work, coach, and they just kind of chuckle at you yet? Um, uh, I would say I'm close to it. I'm close. I, <laughs> against some teams, I'd notice the middle of the field was open. I'd go to Paul T's room because he's a teacher at LCC. Yep. I'd go to Paul T's room, and I would say, I think we need to run this, put this in, and he'd listen. He listened. Somehow, oh, I don't know why. <laughs> Do you, have they given you the power to maybe call things at the line of scrimmage yet, to audible if you see something? Not no, yet? Not yet. Okay. Do you tell them that you want that power? <laughs> <laughs> two, two questions for you, Brady. First one is tell us, because we have a lot of listeners out there, tell us something about Brady Parker that we don't know, maybe something you like or something you do in your spare time or something that would kind of surprise us. Ooh. Well, we know he doesn't paint. We, <laughs> for good reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say, even though I'm not the biggest guy, I eat a lot. Do you eat a lot? I eat a lot. And you, say you don't look like you eat a lot. I mean, you're a pretty thin guy. But yeah. yeah. What's your favorite food? Ooh. 
Uh, Paul. <laughs> um, it's probably steak. Steak? Okay. Nice. Look at Dad's wallet. Yeah, yeah there. Troy's happy about <laughs> yeah. that. Second one, I always ask every athlete I talk to, I want to know this because I'm such a competitor. I'm telling you, I, the one team that you love beating, who's the one team? You, I ask every athlete I interview. Remember who you that. still have to play Yeah, no, no, I ask that because a lot of people listen, and it's just, it makes for good radio. <laughs> um, not in a conference. I'd say in, bas- in basketball, I'm a senior, football, Shawnee, but now we're in a conference. It's Bluffton. It's always been Bluffton since I was younger. Which happens to be the this team game. they play this weekend. Yeah. Talk about the Pirates. That's a huge game. They're, they're a really good program. You know, we've took this week very seriously, like biggest game of the year. Ever, ever since Monday, we've been, we've been loud, louder than we've been all season. And I think everybody's just locked in. Hey, Troy, let's talk a little bit about Bluffton as a yep. coach. Uh, what are some things that concern you guys about Bluffton? Uh, their speed. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're a very fundamental team. Uh, they have a young quarterback with a lot of speed and a good arm. Uh, they have a, a couple of receivers that can just burn it down the field. Uh, up front, they're, they're good size. I think we're very comparable up front to them. Um, but I think, you know, a, a collectively, we have to stop their speed. We have to stop them from getting on the edge. Uh, and then also contain the middle. We have to shorten the field of play. Offensively, I think if we do what we're good at, we're going to be able to move the ball up and down the field. But like we tell the kids each week, every person on the field has to do three words. Do your job. Yeah. yeah. And if that comes together, then good things happen. You guys kind of recommitted yourselves to running the football after week one, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Did you kind of look back after week one and say, hey, we got Matthew Quatman. He's got to have it at least 20 plus <laughs> times really a game, right? Good. Well, <laughs> yeah, and we did. And again, you know, Coach Stolly was in his first week of, of right. varsity right. play calling. Right. He learned a lot about himself, but I think he learned even more about the team. So we, we got back to what we were good at. And what that's done is that opened up opportunities for our quarterback to run the football to where in the past couple of years, you know, when you have a 220 pound quarterback, it's easy to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can kind of design things around him. Now that you have somebody that's just a little bit less in weight, maybe like 40 pounds. um, (laughs) Start eating, start eating. It's everything. (laughs) Coach Stolle was trying to protect him a little bit, you know, for our longevity, from a longevity standpoint. But I think, you know, we're, we're really locking in on improving our running game which opens up the passing game a little bit. Short pass, long pass, and I, I think we're on the right track. Yeah, because you're really good up front, aren't you? We are. Yeah, your five interior guys are fantastic. You know, as far as we made it in the playoffs last year, uh, taking that defeat from Macomb, we, uh, we had really Carson and Billy were the two senior starters. Everybody else was underclassmen. Mm-hmm. And so this is a good opportunity for, for us to really highlight our interior line this year. Now, Brady, every quarterback, every smart quarterback, I should say, knows that you got to show love to your offensive linemen, right? What are some ways that you let those guys know, hey, big guys, I can't do this without you? You know, after every, every touchdown, I'd say good. I just let them know, great blocking line. After every pancake I see from one of them, I, I pat them on the head. You know, I just let them know after every good play, after every game that, this, we couldn't have done this thing without the line. Well, let me tell you, offensive linemen love food, okay? <laughs> so if you want to give them some incentive to take pizza, <laughs> steaks. I'm just glad you know. he didn't say something like I buy them Rolexes. Because yeah. there would be a big <laughs> no, problem we would with have LCC. Dad yeah. <laughs> would have a real issue. <laughs> Brady, I, I met you and your dad for the first time this evening. Super impressed by both of you. I spent a lot of years, 50-plus years in education. I've seen a lot of kids. I've seen a lot of families. Have you sat down and thought about the blessing it is to be in the family you're in right now? Not just mom and dad, your brothers and sisters, but you have a great family core. Has, has that sunk into you yet? Um, it's sunk in a little bit. I don't think it's sunk, sunk in fully, but realizing that I have two parents that fully support me and both of my, all three, all four of my siblings support me in everything I do. And there's, they have my back in every, every second of my life. And you probably have some teammates and some people in your school yeah. that don't have that, and you really are blessed in that manner. Yeah. Yeah. Before we let you guys go, what what, what does this mean, Troy? This this relationship you because it's good. It's real You're good. Make me cry. I know that's okay. <laughs> that's okay because the, the, you get emotional when you yeah. care and love someone as much as you do with your I own do. kids. And I've sat there before with my son and daughter, so yeah. I know what you're going through. It's it's an absolute. It's just a true blessing. Um, I love all my children unconditionally and equally. 
and he's my baby. Um, yeah. He's mom's baby, most importantly. Um, but, <laughs> smile. you know, when, when I talked to Coach Palti, when we were discussing me being on the staff, I said, I don't want to coach quarterbacks. <laughs> right. um, I, I just I want to keep my distance from that. But it's been such a it, it's just been so great to be out there watching him do what he does. And if he needs me, he knows I'm there. And I think that gives him the comfortability. And then after the game, generally, if the kids aren't playing somewhere else, the siblings are there. First one's down on the field to hug him. And yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I, yeah. awesome. I had siblings that they'd hit me. They wouldn't hug <laughs> me after the game. Uh, Brady, um, you brought up Scott Palti, the head football coach there, and how he listened to you when you came into the room. What, what's the best thing about playing for a guy like that? The guy's always successful. Guy I absolutely love visiting with when I go to practice. Uh, a guy that is very open. What, what is it about playing for Coach Palti that's so much fun? Um, it's really fun because he listens to his players. He's not, he's not, he loves to have fun. He always makes sure we have fun. He, but he, the one thing he makes sure is everybody's working hard. We're always locked in. But his relationship with the players is just amazing. That's why I think he's always so successful. Yeah, without a doubt. A couple other questions I have. We, we, guys, we have to ask this, right? Five athletes in the family, yeah. including mom and dad, <laughs> yeah. both really good yeah. athletes. Who is the best Parker athlete in the family, according to you, Brady? Um gotta go with me yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's why he's gonna be successful Love yeah it. he looked you right in the eye too and he said yeah. it's gotta be Cause me because he knows we, i'm the quarterback of this team he, he, he knows. knows it he knows it <laughs> and then last one okay you go to your football practice it is a wonderful atmosphere i love watching the practices there that field is fantastic but there's a wiffle ball field right off the edge. There is, Do you guys yeah. ever go over there and play some wiffle that's ball that's in your backyard that's right, right next right. door <laughs> <laughs> um during the summer, we'd have like two games a week, and when we, oh, but when we were awesome. when we were little, uh, our neighbor used to ha used to set up a like a league, and there was different teams like the Tigers, the Indians, the Yankees, and nice. it got it got on the news one time. But yeah, we always go over and play there. Man, so if you last question, we then we'll get you guys. Out <laughs> if you didn't play football, basketball, baseball, anything else, every time I play blank, I got to win at it. What is it? Every time I oh. Um, got to be a video game or something, at, right? I'm board I'd, game, well, board, board game. Board game. Kids play board games no. anymore. Every right. time, yeah. every time I play Madden or 2K, I yeah. have to yeah. win. Yeah. Have to I'm a Monopoly guy. <laughs> Tell you my age, guys. Thanks so much. Thank for you. Thank you. And if I could just add yeah. one thing about Coach Palti, sure. There's not, in my mind, there's not a finer human being as a coach in this area. And our community is very blessed to have him. And I'm very blessed to coach with him. Um, he's, just, he's just a gem of a human being. And he's really embracing our community and the coaching staff as well as the players. And my, I'm, I'm just so fortunate that two of my sons were able to play for him. So he's a great guy. Fellas, we wish you nothing but a bunch of luck moving forward. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. All right, we're back here with the three wise men on the WSN podcast: Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine, Miles Holiday. Guys, it's time for the day. Excuse me, the Diamond Dave Bowen best thing we saw all week. Man, we've got so much to be blessed about in this area. Every Monday or every Wednesday afternoon, we come in here and we never know what we're going to talk about because we see so much. Miles, uh, it was an unbelievable week, and you guys, we are so blessed. Like Danny said, because we get to see high level athletics all the time, right? Um, best things I saw, guys, the the Bathy lighting game that uh, Randy Roberts and I did. It was a great game. Uh, how about 99 and a half yard run by Mikey Hale where he, he just breaks through and then outruns absolutely everybody and scores, ties a, a state record, which I would say he should have the state record because it really was 99 and a half. That ball was inside, right? The state sure. record is 99, but I think he should have it. But then he goes over to the bench, gets air in him, and he's back out there, doesn't miss any time. It was absolutely amazing. Amari Wash the same night was sensational. Four TDs, blocked the punt, was everywhere on the field. Those two guys were spectacular. But to me, the best was the post-game environment. Walking mm -hmm. out of the stadium, right? 
right? Both teams uh, still filtering through the field with their, their fans. And even the Elida kids, you know, tough loss, 62 to 56. But, you know, just seeing them interact with, with the student body and their parents and the way the stadium is set up over at Elida, you know, everybody just kind of mm-hmm. congregates out of that one end zone. And it was just, you know, you're walking through it and you're like, man, it's a shame someone had to lose this game because this environment was outstanding. Mark, the best thing you saw this week. I, I got two. Number one, Saturday morning, a JV football player at Bath named James Holt was in a very difficult position when he was tackled and hit, and they thought he was paralyzed. They took him to Memorial Hospital, then they shipped him by life flight to Columbus to Children's Hospital. When he left Lima, it was pretty grim. The text that I got, the prayers went out everywhere. Sunday morning, I get a text and says, he's got feeling in his toes. Mm. And Monday, I'm at, I got an email from the school that said he now can lift both legs. He's weak on his left side, but he's got movement in both legs. That was the best, that, that message I got, that that young man is probably going to be a healthy, normal high school kid soon. Well, our therapy was the best text I've seen, best email I've seen in a long time. That's number one. That's great. Okay. Fantastic. Number two, and this, I'm saying this is a Browns fan. Oh, no. Justin Fields. Yeah. You know, I, I thought he was treated wrongly in Chicago. He's having a good set of, of, of games this year. I, obviously, whether they two and one, I think, Miles, is that right? Three, three and oh. They're three and oh. That's right. Baby. Three and oh. This, Everybody at this table they are. for him. Really, yeah, I, I do. do. I, I, yeah. I'm glad to see he's having success because of how he was treated in Chicago. And I was a Russell Wilson fan. I liked Russell Wilson. I think the game has passed him by, but I was a Russell Wilson fan. But to see what he's doing, uh, Justin Fields is doing right now, I- I'm really happy for him. Yeah, That's I think fantastic. the Steelers found their guy. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, I have two also. Uh, I think uh, Miles is going to laugh at me when I say this, but I got to go down to Indian Lake Friday night, and I got to watch the number one high school player in all of the land, which, guys, we don't ever get to say that. We get a, Sometimes we get the number one player in the state of Ohio. He is the number one guy in 24-7, rivals, whatever poll you want to take. He is a five-star recruit, and I'm talking about Tavian St. Clair. Now, Tavian got hurt in the first half. Uh, the injury, he's going to be okay. It's a shoulder injury uh, or an arm. What, what do you term? Arm spasms. Arm spasms. Arm spasms. That's right. That's right. Um, he stayed on the sidelines. He, he looked you know, he looked like he wasn't in a lot of pain. His brother came in, Rain St. Clair. He is a freshman, and he is fantastic. He's going to be really, really good. But just to watch those guys play and to, and to see talent like that and appreciate talent like that. And, you know, people laugh at, at us at times on the show when we – you know, gush over people, but it really is a blessing to get to see someone who has a God-given ability, and they've taken it, and they've just worked so hard, and you can see the work this kid puts into it. He's fantastic, and he I, I think he is going to have a terrific career at Ohio State, and I think he's next-level talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it helps that he's going to Ohio State, right? It makes right. it a little bit easier yeah. to like him, too, right? Yeah, he's a very likable yeah. guy. His brother, Rain, you said? Yes, I, that's a great name for a quarterback. I know, right? right? Make yeah. it rain. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, he did on the second play yeah. of the game. Or second play, he throws it 50 yards, and the kid makes a spectacular yeah, catch. Yeah, they, they say he's going to yeah. have a stronger arm. Second thing I want to talk about is the, the running game in Ohio State. Look, I'm an Ohio State historian. I've been watching them my entire life. And when I watched what they did, sat it, albeit against Marshall, mm-hmm. and they look, I said it before, sometimes they look like they were playing with their food because they look <laughs> bored. But the running game was just spectacular. I can't wait to see it against big-time competition, but that's my second one. All right, guys, it's time to do it. We do it every week. Maybe, maybe the best part of the show. We'll see. It's the WOSN preview schedule. And this is week six, guys. Let's start with this one. Myself and Darren Gilbert, the big guy, is my color guy. I'll be on the call for this one. Columbus Grove at Allen East. Columbus Grove comes in. Look, they are a freight train right now. They're 5-0. and oh. They're going out to Allen East, 2-2. Two two. Allen East made a change at quarterback, guys. Keegan Jones is now running the show. Not a bad thing because Jackson Thompson is a fantastic running back who's having a spectacular year with with 407 yards and nine touchdowns. Now, it might not seem like a lot, but nine touchdowns, he's got a nose for the end zone. That's going to be a problem for the Columbus Grove defense. You call Columbus Grove a freight train, but who's the conductor of this freight train? Right, right? You're going to have to right, figure out great what, point. what's going to be the quarterback situation. Alex Meyer came in, played uh, oh, pretty well, but – here, I, I'll figure it out for you guys, Columbus Grove. You've had two quarterbacks get hurt. Who's going to play quarterback? Don't worry about it. Just give it to Trent Barraza. You don't have to throw the football when you got Trent Barraza over 200 yards last week.
week. And you know what makes it great? You can play complimentary because this defense is as good as anyone's defense in Northwest Ohio, only giving up nine points a game. Andy Coles has got two fantastic players over there in Houston and Mays. That is a defense that will turn their opponents over. Eight interceptions. It's a great secondary with Barraza blanketing everybody. This is a, a really good physical football team. I think Alan East has got their work cut out for him. I would agree with that. And I heard I had an interesting discussion with a guy this week. You know how good Barraza is offensively? I have people think he might be better defensively. Right. Because he has a great nose for the football. He knows how to get to people. He's got those linemen ahead of him you mentioned a moment ago who keep him free, you know, keep the blockers off of him. And he has a great nose to get there. He can, he can I would say nine points a game, right? Yeah. Nine and obviously four. Grove is on a roll because they're going to end up the season with LCC week nine and Bluffton week 10. They got to keep it going right now and we're going to Alanis this week. Well, I'm glad you said something about him defensively because look, the stats are incredible offensively, Mark. He's got 79 attempts for 725 yards, nine touchdowns, a 9.2 average, 145 yards a game. Yes, I've done my prep work for the game. Yeah. I'm super <laughs> excited, guys. I can't wait for that game. Go back and look at week one, Danny. He didn't get many carries. I, I was there. I was he's, there. He's, Miles he's and done I were it there. since yeah. then. Yeah. He's really done that in four games. Yeah. All right, guys, Salina goes to Elida. Randy Roberts and our very own Miles Holiday will be on the call for that. Guys, Salina comes in at 4-1, and one, so right in the middle of that WBL race, like they are every year, guys. They do a tremendous job down there. Elida, 1-5, and five. but guys, they showed so much life last week. Yeah, how would you like to score 56 points and get the loss, right? That's got to be so well, difficult. Last week, uh, Elida losing to Bass, 62-56, and in a game that you have to watch it to believe it. Uh, Randy Roberts and I were there in and we're still at the end of it. We're like, what did we see? Because it had absolutely everything. It was an instant classic. To me, Elida goes as well as Magoo plays at quarterback. When he completes passes vertically, That's they a great are point. outstanding, yeah. right? But when he misses short, he drops his, uh, his elbow and slings the ball, pushes it, becomes an interception. Game really changed when they had an opportunity. It was a tie ball game. Bath intercepted him because he slung a, a curl route that landed in the hands of uh, Bath and ran it back for a touchdown. Down. Elida still had a shot time with about two and a half minutes left going in to possibly win the football game. Bad snap over Magoo's head, and that changed the whole complexion. This Elida team, when they play good football, watch out. They're really good, but when they play bad football, watch out because it's awful. It is a fun matchup because Salina can score points. We know that. Bobby Morris might be one of the best uh, dual threat quarterbacks mm -hmm. in the WBL. He can throw it, he can run it. What do you have uh, last week, over 200 yards rushing? Yeah, he did. And, and let's look at Elida, because in weeks two, three, and four, they scored a total of 21 points. Crazy, isn't it? And they lost all three games. Yeah. But then they score 56, and they lose. Their defense has been a struggle all year long. Uh, you know, they shut out Rodgers in the first game, and then they gave up 21, 37, 28, and now 62 this past week. So it's been on the defensive side as well. I talked to an assistant coach in the league this week who said, you know what, the two best football athletes in the Western Buckeye League play for Elida, Amari Wash and Parker Krim. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, and I thought, that, you know, that's, that's really pretty interesting to have those two guys to build around, but they have struggled some lately. And Salina, they're playing really, really well. And who do they have week 10? Wapak Kaneda. And they're trying to keep it going so they can get to the point and make that Wapak a big game. Yeah, the Salina team, if they can run the football mark, watch out because, yep. you know, John Lutz last week, uh, 144 yards of him and Mo uh, Bobby Morris. That's 350 yards just between those two. So if they can control the line of scrimmage, tough to do with Parker yeah. Krim, isn't it? Don't you think, and I, we're a little bit off topic here, but everybody got to the five wide stuff. And so you started having smaller d defenses, DBs that can run and whatever. Yeah. If you could run the football now, it's a little bit out of character for what everybody's trying to stop well, week in and week out. Mark, I argue all the time that in the Big Ten, you're seeing it all the time. You'll get a corner who's six foot, 165 pounds, but he runs a 4'3", so we're going to put him on their best receiver. And yeah. it doesn't always work that way, right. and no. I get so frustrated with it. Yeah. I, I, look, Seven Banks wasn't a great player, but he's my prototype kind of defensive back. Number seven, Ohio six, State. Yeah, yeah, six foot two, 195 pounds, could run really well, cover good. He just didn't have well, between the What ears. are we doing with Sonny Styles? Right. Okay. I used right. to be a, uh, a, what, a safety, right? And we bulked him up a little bit. We put him in a linebacker position and used his size and speed for doing Sonny Styles. Yeah. yeah, one last thing, yeah. okay? People in Salina, if you hear this, 
Do not kick it deep to Amari Wash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put do, that out. We'll put do it not that do right. that. Uh, He's ba- pretty good. Bath <laughs> did it, and I kept saying, "Don't do it. It's going to wind up bad." Oh. And it sure did. Guys, game three, the NWC game of the week. We just talked about it earlier. Yeah. Evan Skiller and Jack. Don't call me Mark McGuire on the call for this one. Lima Central Catholic at Bluffton. Guys, this game is going to play in who wins the Northwest Conference. Yep, absolutely. Uh, LCC, we know, 4-1, 2-0 in the conference. Um, last week, they went to Fort Laramie and got a win again, on the road against a pretty good Fort Laramie team. Um, they do have to, to play this game. they got Grove coming up, too, later on, week nine. They've got four consecutive wins after that. Coach Parker just talked about a little yeah. bit ago, not quite ready week one. What am I going to see here? And they've won four in a row since that time. Bluffton's 5-0. and oh, They've given up 24 total points on the season. Mm. Their, their defense is outstanding. They're fast. It, it, They're really they really fast. are. And, you know, yeah. if we wouldn't mention Braz all the time, we'd be talking about Landon Worcester. You're absolutely right. Because he, said that. Yep. he is really, really, really talented. And they're 5-0. and oh, And, and I, they got Grove in Week 10. This is a huge matchup in the conference this, this weekend to stay, who stays in the race. Yeah, you just wonder if Evan Skillard is going to show up and be impartial, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How tough is that going to yeah. be for that guy? Good old Bluffton Evan going to have to call this one right down the middle. You see him biting his tongue. Ooh! <laughs> it's really, to me, guys, it's going to be a battle of whose will is going to win out, right? Both teams got guys that are dynamic runners, right? So who's going to really dominate A and B gap and move people out of the way? Because you look at that Bluffton offense level, Gieske and Worcester, three-headed monster, any of those guys mm-hmm. can really hurt you but lcc a little bit n- a truer to what you know you got to do right and and that is quatman right you don't have to think about who should carry the football here or there it's quatman it's quatman it's quatman i think if uh, whoever runs the ball for more yardage i think is going to win now that being said don't forget mylon cowens and we said mm-hmm. brady what what's your favorite route the go ball right mm-hmm. cowens can get behind anybody a go ball and run into football i think that's lcc's secret for winning you run that play action and get those db starting to cheat up to stop Quatman, and there, there go. goes. There's Over your top. go route. Yep, guys. Game four: Diamond Dave Bowen and Josiah Stober. St. Mary's at Van Wert. St. Mary's comes in three and two. Van Wert one and four. Guys, we've seen St. Mary's struggle the last couple of weeks. They lost a key running back. They've had some issues. I promise you. I think they're going to get it all together. I think this is a team that can make a deep playoff run because they run the ball so effective. They're physical. They're big. What say you must? Well, I, I think this is a terrible formula for Van Wert because St. Right. St. Mary's <laughs> loves to run the football, uh, number one in the WBL at running the football, and you look at the defensive stats, who's got the worst rushing the defense? It's Van Wert, right? Th- this is going to be a recipe for disaster for Van Wert. Um, it, I was really surprised, Mark, that OG hung with uh, uh, St. Mary's as much as they did. In fact, they even outgained them yeah. last week. Uh, this is a St. Mary's team early in the year we thought was just going to be a dominant I didn't team. I think they'd lose the game. Roll over yeah. you. What do you think's going on? Well, they, they've had trouble running the football. They lost Colt Mabry for a mm-hmm. while. They got him yeah. back last week, but they still couldn't get their ground game going against a really sound defensive plan that Ottawa Glander came up with. They did win the football game 21-16. I think sometimes you got to win a game when you're not at your best, and they were able to do that. Great point. I think this is a St. Mary's team, that, much like what we saw a year ago, because they've got Van Wert, then they have Shawnee, Kenton, Elida, and they finish the season with Bath. Remember last year about this time? St. Mary's really got it going. They sure had that Four really star. good run into the playoffs. I think they're primed to start doing that this week. And this is against a, a Van Wert team that's given up 43, 42, 41, and 35 in their four losses. And you mentioned their trouble with the run game. 215 yards a game yeah, they give up. Yeah, th- this, this could be one of those games where St. Mary's doesn't even think about throwing the football. They just hand the ball off to those three guys and, and watch them do their thing. Van Wert's only chance, right, if they get Cowan uh, involved well, with the passing game, run by a couple guys, stay in the game early that. But you got to create some turnovers, too. you, you, you got to have some luck when you're Right, side, yeah. and, and the bad thing for Van Wert, though, is you, you turn it over also. They've had nine interceptions as well. Yeah. Guys, game five. Not only may this be the game of the night uh, in the MAC and in Northwest Ohio, this may be the game of the year in the state of Ohio. Garrett Seawright, our own Mark Shine on the call for this one. Marion Local at Versailles. I don't know if you remember this last year, Mark. I do. They had a heck of a game. They and did. And if it's anything close oh. to that, you and Garrett are in for a treat. D- Danny, I was there last year for that game, and it was one of those football games when it was over. You better get the ice bags out because mm. they were stacking bodies everywhere. It was a 14-13 Marion Local win. Marion Local was up 14-7, right? Okay, we're going to ice this one out. And Versailles went on one of those drives, 
10, 12, 14 play drives, ate up the rest of the clock, got it down. They scored. It's 14, 13. Do we kick? Do we go for two? And they missed the kick. Mm. And that was their loss the last year to Mary Local. But it was that good a game. And if it's going to be that good a game this year, I think Versailles is going to have to defend as well as they did last year. They're giving up only seven points a game this year. They've got two shutouts. You're not going to shut out Mary Local. You're not. But you got to play enough defense to stay in the game and give your offense a chance. So uh, Ryan Jones, head coach at Versailles, celebrated his 50th win last mm-hmm. week, right? Congratulations, Coach. That's great. I have a feeling if he picks up 51 this week, he'll remember 51 <laughs> a lot more than 50. We all yeah. will remember yeah. 51, yeah. It, it's a tall task. You almost have to throw a perfect game, right, to beat yep. Marion Local. Uh, they're on that march to 59. Um, the problem that for Marion Local, and I don't know if anybody can figure this out, is how do you stop Victor Holscher? He just comes up with catch after catch. You know what, Miles? I, I want to go back to that because you're right. He had four touchdown catches in five receptions against Delphi St. John's. Okay, this week I'm going to come out and I'm going to play pass defense and Parker Hess runs for four touchdowns. Right, right. Yeah. You know, who, what are you going to take away? you you, you got to do something to try to make them one-dimensional, but they are so good in so many areas. How, how do you take something away from Especially, them? Especially, and they'll put him back in punt return. He's another weapon there, and they run reverse. They just use him so I, much. I was talking to a college guy this week about Victor Holscher. Where can he fit in? Last year, he took a punt, t- punt back for touchdown. Yep. The next time he caught it, he almost took it back. The third time, he said, hey, Griffin Bruns, take this. You, <laughs> you, you do it, you do it this time. Well. You could yeah. see him actually motion and come get the ball this time. He, he is dynamic. He's been on state, two state track championships. Yeah. He's 6'2 with hands. Yeah, he is yes. quite the really athlete. Good. Yeah. Guys, game six. Our own Miles Holiday and our own Kelsey Beimer on the call for this one. Anna at Delphi St. John's. Both these teams are kind of reeling a little bit. It's still a MAC game. There's still a lot of athletes out there. Anna at Delphi St. John's. Yeah, Delphi St. John's, I think, is very underrated defensively with Mueller and, and Cable. Uh, 50 tackles and 40 tackles apiece. Yeah, good athletes. Yeah. They get up field a little bit. This team has 12 tackles for loss. But to me, though, it's Boggs and Wirtz offensively. If they can move the football with those guys and keep their defense off the field, I think if they get 150 yards rushing between those two, the quarterback and the running back, I think Delphi St. John's wins this one. Other thing, don't kick it to Pullman if you're Anna. He averages 35 yards of return. You got a lot of advice this week for coaches. Look, I would get film, and I would look at my special teams guy, and I'd say, number four, he never touches the ball when we kick it, right? Much better to kick it out of bounds than let that guy celebrate in your own end zone. Yeah. Well, last week, Anna broke a two-game losing streak, beat St. Henry 21-14, defensive battle. Big win for Anna. Big yeah. win for Anna because they lost two in a row mm-hmm. you know, to get them kind of back headed in the right direction. And, and Delphi St. John's broke a losing streak last week by beating Fort Recovery. So it's kind of two teams that are coming off of wins, trying to build on it and maybe pile up some points heading into the playoffs. And Mark, uh, th- three touchdowns seems to be the, the thing for Anna, right? Yep. Anytime they've scored three touchdowns, they get to win. Anything below that, they have, They better get to win, Mark, because look what's next, right? Oh, boy. For sales and Marion Local. So it They're gets pretty good. Yeah, it gets pretty <laughs> tough pretty quick for them. So Anna's it? wanting them to beat each other up this weekend, right? I would say, <laughs> yeah. Guys, we're going to change gears here. We're going to go to volleyball. We're going to call it a bump, set, and spike with Mark Shine. Mark, give us your top five volleyball teams in the area. Okay, this was a little bit difficult, surprise. So many of them. We have some really good volleyball teams already. So I'm going to go this way. Coldwater's 15-0. Mm-hmm. Okay, they are the best volleyball team I've seen this year. I've not seen them uh, in, up close and personal. I've seen them on our station. They're really, really good. Spencer Esther's going to Stanford. They're a really, really good volleyball team. They've got Parkway this Thursday night. Fort Laramie, they're my second pick. Fort Laramie's got one loss this year. That was to Coldwater the opening week. In the, in the Coldwater Invitational. Right. They've already beaten St. Henry twice, uh, at 2-0 at that same Coldwater thing, and then 3-0 in the regular season. I, I've got them. They're going to win the SCAL, which somewhat down a little bit this year at Jackson Center and a couple other schools, but they're going to win the SCAL this year, which is a really good volleyball league. Number three, Lipsick Vikings. Okay. We've not talked about Lipsick enough. They are Brett Newell's done n- another really good job with them. Cameron Bro went over a thousand assists this week. Uh, Denasia Danzi is a wonderful at the net, good player as far as she kills the ball, she blocks the ball. Brett Newell does as good a job as anybody around. They're trying to win two leagues this year: the Blanchard Valley League and the Putnam County League. I got them at number three. All right, then it gets tough because I think it's really hard after that. Number four, I stuck St. Henry in. Mm. And the reason I stuck them is they have a win over New Bremen, 3-0. 
Um, that's they, a good win. Oh, no, that's yeah. a really good win. Now, New Bremen plays Coldwater coming up next week, and, and the winner of that match that could be a three-way championship once again in that conference. By the time you get Coldwater, St. Henry, and New Bremen, all could be three and one, just like or, uh, eight and one, just like last year. So right now, I've got St. Henry in there, and then I didn't know where to go, so I went this way. Crestview beat Bluffton last yeah, night. Yeah, huge win. And they're going to win the NWC if they keep going in, in a tremendous five-set match. So I got Crestview in there, and then I got the winner of Shawnee and Ottawa Glendorf. They play October 3rd. I think those, they got to be mentioned, too. I, I got six or seven teams right now <laughs> I think are really good. To narrow it down to five was hard. Do you ever remember a time where there was more state-ranked volleyball teams oh, in our area than right now? Question. You know, I, I didn't look at the poll that came out Monday all the way through. I did a little bit for our preparation for our game tomorrow night. New Knoxville had a losing record last week and was ranked. Yeah. Okay, that, that's how good the volleyball is in the MAC and, and down south. And then, of course, what's going on at Lipsick? Lipsick was two last week. Um, that's a really good volleyball team, and we got some really good ones in our area. And Shawnee, they graduated a whole bunch of people, but my goodness, are they playing well right now? And obviously, Otto Glandorf has been good for a long time. Shawnee, some of their best outside hitters are young, too, they freshmen are. and sophomores. Yeah, and so. th this might be the best job Coach Hutchins done because she had people who could flat out play last year, and she used them very, very well. She coached them very, very well. But to graduate those people and still be where she's at this year, her team's done really well. Let me ask you about a couple players. Okay. Uh, St. Henry, Raya Busher, um, the back row player. Uh, Mark, I looked at the stats. O only 10 errors all year you, long? You, you Unbelievable. You know what, Miles? I, I'm a fan of libero play, which right. you're going to hear in just a moment when we talk about the toughest thing to do in yeah. volleyball. Yeah. She gets to more balls than anybody I've seen. You try to hit wood against her, yeah. but not only that, she doesn't just get to them. She passes the ball to the setter. A lot of girls can get to balls and make plays on balls, but they don't do it in a, in a way that the oh, setter yeah. Yeah, can point. use it then. Great point. But she gets the ball to her setters who can use it. A year ago, the, the girl at Shawnee went to Finley. I uh, went to Toledo. My, I'm drawing a blank on it. Anyway, Fryberger. thank Fryberger. you very much. She was player of the year in, in Western Buckeye League last year as a libero. It's probably not going to happen this year in the MAC. But you can make a pretty good argument that Ryan Busher is, is, is the MVP of the conference this year. You and I had that Coldwater and St. Henry match yep. last year, and she was just unbelievable. I, I, I fell in love with the libero because yep. of her. Absolutely. Um, other uh, young lady I wanted to talk to you about, Morgan Blasting game at Coldwater. 243 kills already? Yeah, because uh, she is well, – I would say she's their offense because Spencer Esler is really, really good. Right. As, but they got two really good hitters. Now, which one am I going to try to take away? Sure. And, and Spencer Wrestler is probably going to be in the running for MVP if she's not there, uh, along with Steiniger and, and you know, some other players around the league, uh, Schrader over at New, at New Bremen. But, but when you get the ball to Spencer Wrestler, she does so many positive things with it. But blasting game, I said this last week on the air about another girl, but it applies to Morgan too. If it's homecoming week, and coach says, you're assigned to block her. I'm going, no, because I'm not going to homecoming with bruises on my face and getting pictures right, right. taken. Okay? I want to have all my chickens. Because when she hits the ball, just get out of the way. Yeah. Mark, I've always said this, and I'll continue to say this. I think if boys volleyball were something in this area, Mark, I think it would take – volleyball to new heights and I'm not cutting on the girls I'm not but just the competitive nature of the guys what are we Dan waiting on Danny we're ahead of things I know you don't have a say no, in no, that no, but, I do. <laughs> but we're ahead of things segment wise the quarterback at Nebraska go look at his mm -hmm. volleyball tape oh Rayola the athletic skill that young man has on a volleyball court and you're right. I think it's coming. I think volleyball, is, the growth of the sport is just enormous right now. And you're right. I'm, I'm waiting for it. Why is the sport growing so fast here? Uh, Miles has got some great notes here on Bowling Green State University. They had close to 5,000 for a match last week. Uh, the University of Pittsburgh sold out their venue of 14,000 yep. last week. What, what's growing the sport well, here? I, first of all, it's fast. Yeah. When they went to, to rally scoring years back now. Great and, addition. A great move, you know, because the game is, is so much faster. And it is so athletic, and it's up close and personal. It's a lot like basketball. You can sit in the front row, and that girl's four feet away from you. She might come over and fall on your lap making a play to get to the ball. I read this two weeks ago. The number one sport for females in high school is track. More girls run track than any other sport in high school. Number two is now volleyball. volleyball. Mm. It is so popular, and it's just growing and it's not the game we played at the beach, right? It's, that's right. not the kind of volleyball we're talking no, about not, anymore. No, it's just barely getting it over yeah, there. It, it's, yeah, we just tap the ball around. We have a lot of fun. It's power volleyball, and it's exciting, and it's fun. Ohio State built Cavelli, right? Mm -hmm. It's too small already. 
Yeah. Because of the popularity of volleyball, it's almost too small of a facility already. Yeah, I think it's the ooh and ah moments, right? Because oh, yeah. it, you know, like in yeah. basketball, we love watching a dunk. We go, ooh, and then the ah of like a, a three-pointer. Uh, the, the, the player that dives out of the floor and then barely gets it back up in the air, goes off the floor. There are so many ooh and ah moments, and you're like, look at that athleticism. It is just such fun to watch. Well, and the European countries are just – it's just taken over. My wife and I this summer watched Olympic volleyball, and we would sit there for an hour and watch Croatia and Italy, teams we yeah. don't even care about. But the athleticism and, and, the, and the pride they had was, was over the top. It really is. It's a fun sport. I, I was, my daughters played it. I had a chance to line judge it. I had a chance to officiate it and now call it for WSN. It's, it's a fun event every time I get to go do volleyball. I, I had the opportunity to be a, um, you know, the scene in um, Top Gun, the beach scene where yeah. they're playing volleyball. I was a stunt double for uh, Tom Cruise. That's what I that was, oh. yeah. Those were my abs. Are, really? are you taller yeah. than him? Yeah, yeah, right. Barely. Yeah, thanks a lot, Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, toughest thing yeah. to do on a volleyball floor in your opinion? Well, okay, I, I started with a whole bunch of different things. and uh, Okay, because the <laughs> different skill, but I'm going to go with Libera. And, and I'm a fan of libero play. But let's look at what you got to do. You, you, we talked about Bush a moment ago. You got to be all over the floor, keeping the ball from hitting wood. Yeah, that's number one. Number two, a successful libero passes the ball to her setter, where the setter can use it. Also, now we allow liberos to serve. You have to have that skill in your in your repertoire as well. And finally, a lot of schools now are using their libero as their second setter. Yes. Okay. So now you've got to add that skill. Plus, if you think about where the 10-foot line is, you have to know where you're at because behind the 10-foot line, you can set with overhand fingertip action. And in front of the 10-foot line, you have to set underhand if you're a libero. So there's a whole lot of skills involved with that. I, I really like libero play. I I'm going to agree with Mark because if the block doesn't get up in time, you've got something coming at you in a mean manner that you got to find a way to get it back up in the air. If not, you might get a, a, a nice uh, Mikasa tattoo across your forehead. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Says Wilson. And, and, or yeah. the bruises you get on your forearms. Yeah. From taking those balls and putting them back in play, it, it is it's amazing. Second, I would say that the the setter that has to chase things down and put it on a dime, it, you know, the way they can contort yep. their body sometimes is absolutely amazing. And Danny, or miles along with that, I wanted to put a pedometer on a setter one time just to see how far <laughs> they run in a four in or five game. set match yeah. because yeah. it is they do they cover a lot of ground. You say, well, of course not that big, but their ability and then to maneuver around other players to get to the ball and set it. And see the whole floor. Absolutely. And talk. And, and, and I know I got this hitter here, and I got this hitter here, where are the blockers at? And, yep. and to make all those decisions in a hurry, it, it is very skillful. You're right. Mark, which stat is the best indicator of success in volleyball? Okay. I, I, there's a lot of different ones. I like this one that the coaches, particularly down south of us, call risk-reward. I want to have fewer service errors mm -hmm. than I have points off of serve by a whole lot. And for those people, that means you might serve a ball out of bounds. It might mean you serve a ball into the net because you're trying so hard to hit it hard or place it at this particular point. I'm not talking about aces, although that's a part of it, but can you put your serve in an area that puts the other team off right. balance, out of position, and, and then they can't get the ball to the setter, then you get a free ball, then you get a kill. I think service and the service errors versus service points is a really huge stat. Yeah, you're really dictating terms when you do yep. that, right? Um, to, to me, uh, receiving serve. I, I had uh, college volleyball last night, and ONU only had 38 receiving errors all year long. So that was their 11th match yeah. of the year. So th that is going to show yeah. you, like Mark said, you get that good first pass workable for your setter. That, that's a clear indicator for success. Next big game you got, Mark? You got cold water on the schedule? We, we do. We, we've yeah. got uh, Crestview and Allen East this okay. Thursday night, which I'm kind of curious how Crestview will play coming off a, a huge game on Tuesday night that went five sets. Crestview's really starting to play well, though, and, and Allen East has struggled some this year, but that's our one this week. Then Dave Bowen and crew, they will be at Crestview for their big invitational this weekend, which is one of the, the biggest invitationals around at the end of this you know, as we get towards the end of September, and that'll air uh, Sunday night at eleven, at nine o'clock on WSN. Diamond Dave Bowen, he's a guy that he lights up when you talk volleyball. Yeah, he, he loves it. Well, he gets to go back to school next week for the Invitational. Doesn't have to mess with anybody. Yeah, he's no, he's a retired guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to talk Buckeye chatter. The good, the bad, the Buckeye Miles. Yeah. So the good, uh, big play explosion. But why was there big play explosion? You're blocking on the perimeter. Second. 
second to none. It's good to see you again. And then our old friend, the stiff arm, made a reappearance, <laughs> yes, right? I did, big time. I loved it. How great was that? The to same see guy. <laughs> Boom, get off me. I'm going to the house. Uh, to me, that was the most exciting thing, the big play explosion because of the stiff arm and, and perimeter blocking. Mark, you're good for the Buckeyes. Well, i got to admit, Danny, I was at U13 Soccer oh, watching my grandsons. Oh, boy, I'm going to tell you what. So what I'm going now is over statistics rather than visual, okay? Sure. And what I really like from the good, 280 and 289. Yeah, great okay? balance. When you had the balance of 280 rushing the football and 289 throwing the football, we talked a little bit earlier with Mary Local a little bit. What do you take away when you have a team that that's balanced and can do so many things so well? I, I thought that and those numbers were really outstanding. Yeah, for me, the good was uh, our receiving core. Jeremiah Smith and Emeka Abuka, they really showed up. When haven't they? You know, Abuka's taking a little bit of time mm -hmm. to get going. but You almost the, forgot about him. I know, right? Yeah. But he is a senior leader. But what I like about him is you knew he was going to wait his time. He, he's You've not heard anything out of Buckeye mm -hmm. camp about him being jealous of Smith being the freshman or anything. He's just a senior leader yeah. who is a good quality guy from all reports, great family guy. Uh, but to look, I don't think there's a better duo in the country. I really mm -hmm. don't. And uh, Brian Hartline does a good job. Uh, Ryan Day actually said in his press, press conference, one of the things that Abuka agreed to come back was so he could mentor a guy like J.J. Yeah. Smith. So How many people do that? Th yeah, that's yeah. crazy, right? He called him one of the most unselfish players he's ever been around. Yeah. So it was great to see him. You forgot that he is more than a catch five yards and go down guy. He hit 21 miles an hour on that, uh, that uh, screen pass for a touchdown. He is not the best receiver on the team. I really feel like Jeremiah Smith is, and Emeka Abuka is going to be a first-round NFL mm -hmm. draft pick. That, that to me, is, is Might, that, that stat alone yeah. is just insane. Might be a top 15 pick. Right, yeah. right. All right, uh, Miles, the bad. We have the good. Now we have the bad. We haven't seen a lot of bad, but I've got one. You've got one. And we know we all, you know. Yeah, and I'm sure Jim Knowles will change this a little bit as they get better. But trying to stop the run, um, especially the quarterback run with only six guys in the box, uh, I, I thought that was really tough to do because you're going to ask your defensive tackles to beat double teams nonstop and your linebackers to be perfect on picking the gap to get to. I think what he would do if it was a different team is Caleb Downs is going to be that seven guy and he's going to bring him from different spots to be that seventh guy in the box this top run we're not beating really good football teams keeping six in the box trying to stop quarterback yeah. run so that was concerning Mark. well first of all i thought it was really hot degrees on the field yeah and second i watched the band show i thought it was a little bit subpar <laughs> okay best band in the land yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> okay it was okay but not maybe but here's what really got me when I realized that our kicker kicked the ball oh, out of bounds yeah. three consecutive times, and we had to bring in a freshman who still had a black stripe, From a black stripe yeah. on his helmet yeah. because he hadn't gotten to the end to, to kick off. If you're the number three team in the nation, kick, kick the ball in bounds, yeah. will you? For me, uh, uh, there was a little bit of apathy on the defensive side of the ball. Mm. I really felt like we slow started. Uh, we were coming off a bye week, and that is concerning because we're getting into the heart of the Big Ten schedule. And, guys, there's some teams that we can't afford to do mm -hmm. that with. Now, the Big Ten is not setting the world on fire, but you're still playing Oregon. You're still going to get into the national playoffs, and, and you cannot afford to slow start like that. And when I see that, I, I just wonder if those guys aren't reading their own headlines or something like that. Let's just hope they correct that, and I think they will. That touchdown right before half, right, that, that really yeah. got to you. Because yeah, that was kind of sloppy defense. Like they, they're already in the locker room and they, they should have shut down that Marshall team. But given that touchdown right before half, you're like, oh, what are we doing, fellas? Yeah. The Buckeye Miles. Uh, Junkins, right? Quinchon Junkins. I, he is making a, a, a stake a claim right away that, hey, if there's going to be a Buckeye that might be in the Heisman race, it's him because he is absolutely explosive every time he touches it. I, honestly, I when I watch every single play, but when I see number one on the field and he might get the football, I kind of get to the edge of my seat because he is that guy that he's going to do something explosive every time he touches it. Absolutely insane how quick he is with he's the football. Tremendous. Well, I saw the defense didn't play particularly well in the first half. Gave a lot of yards. Second half, much, much better. So I started looking through the defensive numbers to see who maybe had a really nice game for them. Two weeks ago when we had this podcast, I said it was Latham Ransom. Ransom. I finally oh, yeah, got it right, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I looked through. He led the team in tackles. But I, okay, we went with him once. This time I went with Jordan Hancock. Four tackles, one TFL, two pass breakups. Did a little bit of everything for them. I went with, with Jordan Hancock this week. Yeah. Uh, for me, guys, uh, the video I saw, and this it just made me laugh. It's the funniest video I've seen since... Well, since Maurice Claret was there trying to convince us that they weren't doing anything illegal. And it's the 
it's the kicker. Mr. Fielding, when he went to the sidelines and oh. was trying to convince <laughs> Ryan Day that it was the weather right. that was causing, and I'm telling you guys, I, I, and I didn't realize it during the game, but then you go back and you get on social media and everybody's showing it, and you see Ryan Day just flipping out, <laughs> yeah. and it was hilarious, and he's still standing there believing what he believes, and I'm thinking, I like that kid. Yeah. He's standing up against one of the top coaches <laughs> in the country trying to convince him that it's going to rain, and it was 97 degrees and sunny out. <laughs> so that was my the Buckeye. All right, guys, it's the uh, wrap up of the show here. Our top five teams in Northwest Ohio. We call it Power Five Football. This is getting tougher every week, guys. It's uh, we're getting to truth weeks, right? Or you're going to see if you're like telling the truth with your play or not. Uh, we're a great example of that this week with Bluffton and LCC, right? Whoever loses that one, you can probably kind say goodbye. Yeah, my, yeah, 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 power yeah. five. That's yeah. a, power, a playoff game. Um, so my five, um, no surprise, Marion local, uh, Columbus Grove. Like I know Columbus Grove. Don't know what the quarterback situation is going to be. I, I don't think it matters. So you just call the game accordingly to what you have. Barraza and a great defense. That's enough for them to continue to win uh bluffed in until they get beat you know they're just a scary football team lcc great shot this week right um cold water they just keep doing enough to win you put anything in front of them uh, chip and those guys find a way to, to win and of course wapak who i'm starting to think maybe we very under underestimate Wapak. They they are better than I think we all think they are, and we all think they're really good. I think they might be the one of those teams that goes all the way to the end. They're that good right now. Mark. Well, yeah. right now we have seven teams in our area that are five and zero. Oh. Okay. All right. Now, how am I going to break those guys down? I like Marion Local. Sure. I've seen them a couple of times. I get to see them again this week in a big challenge with another five and zero oh team for sales. I, I've got Marion Local. When you look at Marion Local, they do this. They run well. They defend well. They pass well. Their kicker, Carson Bills, last week put seven, no, excuse me, six kickoffs in the end zone. Huge now advantage. you got to go 80 yards against those guys to score, and you, to do that against Marion Local's defense, it's just one more weapon that they have. I got Marion Local. I got Wapak. Again, I think Wapak's going to win the Western Buckeye League. I thought it was St. Mary's early on, but Wapak is really playing well. I've got Lima Senior. 5-0, and oh, they're going to run to the table in the, in the track. They're going to end up 10-0 and oh on the season unless they're – not the track. We're out of the track. Yeah, the there TK. you go. Yeah, we're, we're out of that. I got a track last yeah, week. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But they're going to – and Hall and his three receivers and, and what they can fun, do. aren't they? Oh, my goodness. They're, they're so much fun to watch. Just highlight some. I got Coldwater number four. Um, right now, I think that's where they belong. I've got Bluffton at five, and here's why. Bluffton is settled with what they're doing. They've got a quarterback. They've got a running back. They've got their defense settled. And I think things are a little bit unsettled right now. Who's going to play quarterback at Columbus Grove? Mm. If Columbus Grove gets that straightened around, obviously the Bluffton LCC game is huge. I, I might jump Columbus Grove back up there. And then I've got Versailles, who I don't know what to do with because I know they're really good, but I know they've got Marion Local this week. And if they win this week, they're going to jump up in there too. The thing about uh, Mark said, you know, seven teams that are five and zero. Oh, no bad choices when you pick our five, right? No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's so many good ones. Yeah. Uh, no surprise here, guys. I've got Marion Local number one. It is absolutely a juggernaut. I think in uh, 30 years we'll look back and realize what a dynasty they had, and they may still be winning. Who knows? But the formula they use. You watch them come out on the field, and you're not super impressed by their size, but you are super impressed by their discipline, their technique, the way their coaches handle things. Danny, last Thursday, Dave, uh, Dave Bone and I were at the Mary Local volleyball game. So I think the team, football team, must have had a team meeting, a team meal, and they came in to watch the volleyball game. It looked like the guys that go to everybody else's high school. Yeah, yeah There are only yeah, yeah. 6'4", 260-pound yeah. guys walking in. You know, they, they look like, and obviously they're great football players, they got really good team speed, and they're big kids. They're, they get in the weight room or whatever. But there's not that, you know, that gigantic guy you say, wow, look at those people. They're just really good football yeah. players. Uh, second, I've got Wapakoneta. I think they're the class of the WBO. Um, I think that uh, Coach Moyer is an underrated coach. I think the system they run, they get a lot of kids out for football. It consumes the town. Their facilities are first rate. I, I just think it is the class program in the area. That I, I think they're fantastic. I've got Columbus Grove, Trenton Barraza. When, again, with the quarterback situation, if they get it figured out, uh, I think they can compete with the best in the state of Ohio in that division. Uh, I've got Bluffton. I think we all know that Grove and Bluffton are on a collision course. Now, that whole train gets derailed this weekend if Lima Central Catholic upsets mm -hmm. Bluffton. And I call it an upset because on paper I think Bluffton is probably the better team. But I'm telling you, the, the way uh, – 
Parker has been playing and 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 Quatman and that defensive line, they've got a shot at that. So uh, you know, that's at Bluffton too. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, you should have an advantage. Yeah, and then my uh, fifth team is I've got Coldwater uh, again. If we didn't have Marion local around, Coldwater would be the class year in and year out. And I got two teams knocking on the door, guys. I got two teams. Lima senior knocking on the door. I just don't think you can count them out with that offense. They can score with anybody. They can score with anybody in the AFC North. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> matter. And my other team is I'm going to give Bath Wildcats some love, guys. They're four and one. I'm just going to give them some love. Look. Listen to me, fellas. If Bath in a couple weeks pulls off that win at Wapakoneta, which I'll be on the call for that one, I'm telling you, we're all going to shake our heads and go, whoa, did we underestimate the Wildcats. But they're having fun, the community's involved, and they're doing things they haven't done in four or five years. So I've got them knocking on the I'll door. I'll tell you this. There's no lead safe against them, right? No, they're no, like your, right? your old brownies, the cardiac <laughs> kids, man. Last two weeks I had them bath down big points, and you're like, oh, bad night for bath. No, they just come roaring back. Yeah, so – Great show, guys. Hey, let's do it again next week. Uh, we're, we're here every Wednesday night. We record this, and uh, I enjoy doing it with you guys. So, Mark, right. thanks for coming in. We appreciate you sitting in with Miles and I, and uh, you're always welcome. Well, it was great to be with you two guys, and I really enjoy listening to two Parkers oh, talk. Oh, that was fantastic. That was, awesome. yeah, that was, that was fantastic. That was outstanding. Yeah. And, Miles, we'll see you on the radio. <laughs> let's do it, buddy. Right. Thanks, everybody. It's the Three Wise Men, WSN.